This video is sponsored by LastPass. We've been dancing around this comparison in other videos, talking about design inspiration and similar approaches to camera implementation. Though the iPhone 7 Plus is nearly a year old at the time this video was produced, it is still the top option offered by Apple. We know we'll get cranky comments about comparing older and newer phones, but if anyone were shopping between these two right now, this is what they would be able to buy. More to the point, since one phone is clearly following the other in terms of aesthetic, and we're pretty sure Apple will be making a more daring design change this year, it's worth taking a few minutes to see just how well this flattery stacks up against the original. OnePlus 5 versus iPhone 7 Plus? Sure, why not? Let's do this iPhone or Android, you should not be using the same password for every service you sign into, so we partnered with LastPass to bring you this comparison. LastPass relieves the trouble of looking for passwords and the anxiety of getting locked out of your accounts. You don't have to keep updating the post-it note in your office drawer. LastPass keeps track of it all for you so you can stay sane. LastPass protects your data and gives you the power to make passwords impenetrable. No need to answer a million security questions, everything is right at your fingertips, no typing required. And users can easily and safely share account details with family and friends. Get started for free with the link in the description of this video and put your passwords on autopilot with LastPass. Now, I always kick comparisons off with design, and yeah, the OnePlus 5 looks like an iPhone. Previous OnePlus has pulled a bit from HTC, but the only remaining accent there is delivering more of a curve to the back plate compared to the iPhone's flat back. And that's about it. Dual cameras? Sure, with the same layout for LED flash and the rear microphone. Palm Treo mute switch? Same spot, though OnePlus adds an extra click to theirs and angled antenna bands running towards the edges of the phone. At least the circular speaker holes on the OnePlus are a little bit larger. The differences on the front face stand out a bit more. Circular fingerprint sensor to a flatter oval. The ear speaker has a grill, and the selfie camera is a little bit larger. But even breaking down the matte black finish, it's exceedingly difficult to look at both phones and not see a strong resemblance, though many in our comments have tried to convince me that I'm blowing this out of proportion. This further reinforces why I like the sandstone case for the OnePlus, recalling my favorite experimental back from the OnePlus 2. And while I love powerful phones with good internal specs, I also care about design. I like a phone that stands out, I like getting into conversations with people about gadgets, and from even a short distance, no one's really going to be curious about the OnePlus 5. Sure, the overall footprint is a bit smaller, Apple wastes a bit more space, but at least the iPhone 7 includes enhanced water resistance. And that's as good a place as any to shift over to the tech inside. These two phones arrive at very different ideas for delivering high-performance hardware. OnePlus is packing the guts of this phone with a top-of-the-line chipset and a ton of RAM, while Apple continues to focus on more modest hardware and relying on optimization to keep things speedy. OnePlus delivers one of the smoothest Android user experiences we've yet reviewed, but for being nearly 10 months old, the 7 Plus doesn't feel like it's fallen much behind. Smartphone manufacturing is pretty much normalized on what a modern pocket computer should resemble, and Apple's presentation is well-polished. These two phones bookend the discussion, and yet manage to meet in the middle on crowd-pleasing performance. Same size screen, same 1080p resolution, though the OnePlus is using an AMOLED panel while the iPhone packs an LCD. Apple delivers one of the more color-accurate screens available on a phone, though the contrast ratio and saturation on the OnePlus might be more eye-pleasing for some consumers. No, the biggest difference is, of course, software. We tend to avoid full-on Android versus iOS debates when comparing two individual phones. But more than any other factor, people are likely buying premium phones these days based on ecosystem. As iOS has gotten more complicated, we have noticed a few more twitches or frame drops, the initial lag as the newsfeed populates, the little pop as the home screen resets after pulling down the notification shade, dropped frames when sliding through multitasking cards. No computer is free from processing delays, though the iPhone has always been the gold standard for responding to user input and masking transitions as programs load. The one area where OnePlus isn't trying to mimic the iPhone is in keeping a fairly stock build of Android, one of the few Chinese manufactured devices which has not flirted with eliminating the app drawer, and happily the OnePlus 5 keeps a fresh look on features like the camera app. 
Speaking of that camera, both phones sport dual sensor hardware with standard and zoom lenses. The OnePlus 5 is a respectable performer for its price range, but the iPhone is one of the most consistent performers we've reviewed for image processing, has class-leading HDR and slow motion video. While both phones can produce high quality UHD video, the OnePlus lacks any stabilization where the iPhone smooths out Handshake really well. And with dual sensors, both phones can use software to blur photo backgrounds. Performance here is similar for software processing, and OnePlus's solution is nearly identical in operation to Apple's portrait mode. OnePlus produced a capable camera, but considering the price differences, the iPhone takes an appropriate victory in overall performance. The audio fight is a bit closer. Apple takes a win for including higher quality stereo speakers against the mono loudspeaker on the OnePlus, though the OnePlus is a touch louder for notifications and alerts. The flip side, OnePlus outperforms the iPhone for headphone performance, 32-bit playback, better dynamic range, and similar amp output to drive headphones. The convenience of having the headphone jack built in, and it's a higher quality solution to boot. The similarities extend to battery life too. The OnePlus 5 is one of the best Android performers we've run through our media bench, and while the iPhone is still better optimized, the lead is getting smaller. Where Apple needs to catch up is in recharging. The OnePlus Dash Charger is remarkably quick. Not just a marketing claim, a half hour plugged in really can keep you powered for a day. So let's wrap this up. Where does that leave us between the OnePlus 5 and the iPhone 7 Plus? It's completely understandable when a good idea or popular design element filters through the smartphone market. We've all sort of arrived at the same glass rectangle as the final evolution of the modern smartphone. But there's a significant difference between organically arriving at similar design elements and producing a phone which follows a market leader almost like a disciple. The danger of following, if this phone is so similar but performs poorer in certain popular areas, it starts to reinforce why you might just want to buy the original. The full conversation is obviously more complex. Balancing the personal preferences between Android and iOS or the Google and Apple ecosystems. And we shouldn't overlook the fact that this is a terrific performer which can be had for $300 less. So maybe that's the takeaway. Similar look, similar features, lacking a few lifestyle options, but a smaller hit to your wallet. This is a much better deal than the time I bought those knockoff Ninja Turtles at the flea market. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for our full OnePlus 5 coverage, including our real camera and real audio reviews. And help us out with some sharing on your favorite social networks. For Pocket Now, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, some gadget guy on Twitter and Instagram. And I will catch you all on the next review.